Hey, everybody. I uh, just want to welcome you guys. I thought we'd have a nice little round table with the, uh, with the group of us here. Let me see if I can see you guys. There we go. And I uh, just want to say hi. So this is uh, Samantha Johnson over for me, upper left. We have Paula Glenn, who is in Australia. Thank you for hanging out with us. What time is it there for you? Uh, eight o'clock. Okay, that's too bad. All right. Nice. Jenny, Jenny, where are you? Colorado. And Samantha, where are you? Southern California. And I am in Sugarland, Texas. I'm Christina Hawkins. The other thing I want to do is, um, if you guys throw, here's how we're going to do this. We're going to have a kind of a nice discussion with the four of us. And if you guys can throw in the chat where you are, your city, say hi, put your name in there, let us know. Don't forget all panelists, all attendees. And I just kind of want to see where everybody's hanging out at and then all of us can know as well. So we got, oh, we got a few people in here. Uh, so Adi's up, Adi's there. Hey, Keith, Keith, Samantha's already up. <laughs> Ben's in San Diego, Mandy's in Seattle, Adi's in New Delhi. Jeanette's in Cheshire, UK. Keith's in Hiroshima, Japan. Tony is in Melbourne. Uh, Carrie's in Boston. Corey's in San Francisco. And then Omar is with me here in Houston. And Christopher is in Milwaukee. So hello to everybody. And typically what we also like to do is your wins and wins and losses or wins and lessons learned. But I think we're just going to kind of maybe dive in here. So if you could, I just want all you guys going to introduce yourself, where you are, what you do, your company, what your role is, and kind of kick that off that way. So Samantha, you want to start? How did I know you'd say me first? Because you're in the upper <laughs> left of me. I, <laughs> I got that, I got that coming in <laughs> spot at the top. <laughs> so, hey, as she said, my name is Samantha. I run Neapolitan Creative. Um, I've been doing this. Uh, started as a hobby in 2009, um, went full-time, left a day job in 2013, and have been building my business ever since. Uh, over the last two years, building the agency side of it, and currently employ eight, uh, and by employ, I contract, everybody's a 1099, um, about eight other women. So we are a full team of U.S.-based uh, agency women, uh, all working um, as 1099ers. Uh, and I love it. I love every piece of it. So uh, I am actually with this year starting to step out of the day to day client project stuff, uh, which is the fabulous part of having an agency. So uh, I get to do a lot more of the strategy and the running the business side of things while my team does the building of the websites and uh, the project management and all that other fun stuff. Wow, fantastic. All right, Jenny, you're here for me. Oh Where? man, <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jenny Shell. I own Design Rangers. So we are a high level creative and marketing strategy firm in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Um, I co-own the business with my husband, Chris, but I am 90% owner and he's 10% owner. So <laughs> I'm the boss. Um, <laughs> we started in, um, well, we started freelancing to pay for our wedding. Gosh, that was 1999. Um, we started our business in 2005, just working out of the basement, a lot of freelancing, a lot of late nights, every single weekend, had two young kids working really, really, really hard. Um, my husband was also working full time as an art director, um, at a B2B ad agency. So in 2007, um, I convinced him to quit his job. We went on with Design Rangers full time, um, worked out of the basement for another probably two or three years, then hired our first employee, um, and it's just been growing since then. So we're, we're still pretty small. We were a team of um, five. Unfortunately, we had to lay off one of our designers um, just due to some slowdowns from COVID. Um, so now we're a, a tight team of four. Um, but day to day, I, gosh, I am, yeah, I used to be a designer. Now I run a business all day. <laughs> it, um, it's a full-time job. I'm the CFO. I'm the CEO. I 
yeah, just trying to keep everything in motion, generating leads. Um, it's, uh, there's never a boring moment. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I do. I love it. I was just thinking today that I, it's really interesting to have fallen from into a role of, you know, graphic designer and being, I think, you know, pretty successful at that. We, we do great work. I love what we do. Um, but it's just, so different that I now am in this kind of running the business mode. Um, and it makes me remember that when I was a little girl, I um, used to play like medical receptionist and I was always like, you know, typing people's names into this like fake typewriter that I made. And um, I love numbers. I really love accounting. And so I can, it's, it's fun to see how the transition has happened. And um, I'm really happy. I'm, you know, every now and then I get to design a logo, but um, <laughs> But other than that, it's running the business and it's great. Awesome. Oh, excellent. And Paula, tell us about yourself. Oh, well, actually, Jenny, I used to do that too. <laughs> How funny. Um, <laughs> so I'm Paula. I'm from Melbourne, Australia. We run a digital agency out of Melbourne um, called Pixel Storm. I joined the company um, to be general manager, I guess. Um, Jack, not really Jack for trades, but manager of everything. Um, in about five to eight years ago, the num God, I forget how old I am. Everything's such a blur. Um, my, my life partner and my business partner, he started the business next year is our 20th anniversary. Um, so it's been around for a long time. And obviously that started similar to you guys as a, he started at freelance and got into it and but so on and so on. Um, and I joined because um, we saw an opportunity to grow as a really ethical professional practice and firm. So really being a no BS, um, down to earth, this is what you're paying for approach, which in this industry is quite a breath of fresh air to a lot of mid-market, medium-sized companies. Um, and it's good. It means we're selective with who we work with because they need to sort of understand and have been through a bad experience to sort of really appreciate that approach. Uh, but it means we work with really amazing businesses across all industries and we really get to help them do web development, um, CRO, so improve their conversion rates to get more bang for them from their buck, uh, and digital marketing. And I also run Click Academy, which is something that was my own initiative, uh, which is Google Ads online course. And I did that because I had this driving me that people, no matter how much money you have, deserve to understand how to do things well. And I feel like it's my job as an industry professional to teach them. If we have the skills to teach and we have the means and know how to do it, which I was able to do through my learnings from Mavericks, um, I could put something together that could really help people go, wow, I can now feel more confident dealing with an agency or do this myself. And it's just so amazing having the calls and having people on there learning from me and it's something I've done completely on my own and that took a lot of confidence to break through that space and apply that same no BS attitude to it. Wow. Oh wow. Yeah, all three, I mean all three different y'all came at this at a different places. It's cool. So I started in 1999. I worked for the Defense Department as an analyst for since I was 18 up until I was like 27. And, but I was the computer girl. I was the one that had to show you how to use the computer and how to install it and all that stuff. And so I kind of, from there grew and married the Marines, so I had to move every two years. So I was like, I'm not gonna be a secretary for the rest of my life, which is at the time that's, you know, and my, my dad's uh, statement still sits in the back of my mind. Well, you can always be a secretary. I swear to God, that's what he told me, you know? And, you know, it doesn't matter. You'll, you'll be able to do this. And I'm like, I don't want to be a secretary. <laughs> and I was like, you, Jenny, where I was, when I was 13, I wanted to be a hospital administrator. Like that was my big goal. You know, <laughs> I wanted to be the boss. I wanted to run the show. I didn't want to be a doctor. If you under, you know, I wasn't, I was going to be the one that told the doctors what to do. And, um, and so ever since that was just, my goal was to just be in charge. And uh, I think my very first job in the IT field, I think I worked the back end of a Navy, I'm sorry, a, a federal bank in Pennsylvania. We were switching from Telnet to uh, internet banking. 
And I was support for that. And then we moved again. And my very first hour in that job, this new job in Arizona was build a website. I bought ympo.org, a four letter <laughs> domain name. And I still manage it to this day. Um, about ready to fire them, but they're good people. <laughs> it's been 20 years. It's one of those things where it's like, it's been 20, I've, 20 years I've been managing this one website. Um, but yeah, so for me, I've got about, uh, I just I just pulled in a fourth person. They're all contractors, like um, like you were, you guys are saying, um, but they're international. So I've got South America, two of them South America. I've got one in um, uh, Ukraine. I'm possibly pulling in somebody new out of the Philippines, and I might hire somebody local here. So things are going well. Um, but yeah, it's just for us, for me, it's just you know, slowly growing. It's been snow. I mean, with kids, it's hard. I know some women do it really, really well. They have their babies and they can grow and they can do that. I couldn't. It was just, so for me, to the point where my daughter is 18, off to college, my other was 13. And now I feel like I'm working full time. Now I can like, all right, I can concentrate on this. You know, kids can kind of take care of themselves a little bit better. But um, yeah, so that's, you know, that's kind of for me, where I'm at right now. And I think, uh, I think a lot of, I think all of us kind of came at this very, just different spots, different ways. Freelancers, it was a, it was a job. You actually were employed, you know? Um, so I think it's interesting to see how, how we all kind of started. I think all of us kind of fell into it though. Right. I mean, oh, 100%. <laughs> you know, it was just one of those things where we kind of, oh, this thing called the internet. That's cool. <laughs> you know. And the then also, wasn't even invented when I no, was in college. <laughs> no, mm -mm. I got, I had an AOL email address. That was super cool back then. And uh, I have, I bought homes, I bought a, I created a homestead website back in 1998, I think, you know, and, uh, but yeah, it was pretty funny. So anyway, so I kind of want to know, what is it that you guys being in charge that you think you do really well? Being a, a woman in this industry, how is it that being a woman in this industry, how do you think that helps you with what you do? Um, I don't know if it's the fact that I, I'm sorry, Paula, go right ahead. I was just gonna say, I think there's a bit of resilience. So ability, ability to um, handle a lot more um, and wear more, wear more hats just in terms of multitasking. Um, and I think that that combined with resilience is a really powerful combination. That's awesome. I, um, I was gonna say empathy. I think I bring a lot of empathy to, um, to our clients. And um, I think it's really helpful when I'm working on leads that I, um, yeah, I think I, I really get a, a sense of what people are struggling with, can connect with them that way. Um, so it's, it's really good for building relationships. Yeah, I'd have to agree with, with Jenny and Paula. And I think um, what I think of, uh, and it came to mind when Paula said it is, there was a book I read once, which I thought was just, it's a, it's a hysterical title, uh, but it has a very like Mars Venus approach to it just in more humorous terms which is men are like waffles and women are like spaghetti. Um, men tend to compartmentalize. Things have to stick in a very specific part of a waffle. Now, it's not true of everybody. This is obviously a generalization, but women are very tangent, multitasking, interwoven like spaghetti. Um, and I think that the same way that Paula was saying it is we on a natural day-to-day -day in life and everything are used to kind of like one thing to the next thing to the next thing to the next thing and we can have that focus where it diverts here and there and be able to come back and still get stuff done. Um, so I think that's definitely helped. Uh, and I would say that mostly not just being a woman, but being a mom, because for me, my business runs in my house with right now, my kids are six and 10. When I started this as a hobby, my daughter, my oldest had just been born. Um, so, you know, it's, it's one of those things like I have to be able to step away do something that has to do with kids or pets or a house or whatever, and then step back into the role. So being able to, to have that resilience that Paula talked about, the ability to do the multitasking, to be able to refocus, handle the tangents as they come flying at me, it, it's definitely been a, a, big, a big part of being able to grow the business. Um, I'd say though on a 
like what I'm good at and where kind of that sweet spot lies. I actually discovered within the last year, year and a half of working uh, in Mavs on things because originally I was looking at it from the perspective of like what we offer and what we do and, and the sweet spot there. But I actually determined that my sweet spot was running the team, uh, which is why I've slowly been stepping out and working on growing the team and, and creating that agency. Um, so for me, my business in this last not even year, it's been maybe the last eight months, um, we've seen a gigantic jump. Uh, by mid-year, we'd already doubled last year's revenue um, just because of that one thing where I noticed I needed to step out and I needed to just run the team and not be as involved with the projects. So finding that sweet spot was really what helped the agency thrive and me thrive. Right. <laughs> Wow. Can you guys share with me right now how you guys are handling all this COVID craziness? How is it that you guys are managing, you know, working from home? If you have kids, if you're, you know, kids, if you're stuck at home, leads, how those are, if those are coming in, how you're managing your customers and leads. Tell me how you guys are kind of working through this, through this craziness. My agency has been, uh, quite fortunate as far as leads are concerned. Um, in just the last uh, few months, we've actually brought on more people to help with all the projects that have been coming in. So lead wise, we didn't have to do anything to handle it or work through it. Um, we're fortunate that our niche actually seems to be thriving in COVID, um, which has been amazing for us. I think the hardest thing for me as an agency owner is the uh, when school started. <laughs> so, uh, it, it's been one breath at a time is really how I've been handling it. Um, I had to adjust my schedule. I had to be flexible. I had to give myself a lot of grace because for the first half of the day, my kids from like eight to 12, it's mommy is teacher and not agency owner. And then from 12 to five, I'm trying to get everything done. And if I'm disciplined on a good day, I'm up with my husband at 4 a.m. doing something from four to eight before I turn to teacher. Um, haven't been strictly disciplined. So that's not every day that that four to eight shift happens, but yeah. it helped to get more done because I'm limited on the hours. Um, so that's been the hardest thing uh, during COVID is really being mommy, teacher, and agency owner. Um, so it, it's been our schedule and just giving grace and relying on my team a lot more than I, I have. Um, really being able to let go of the reins and say, I just need somebody else to do it because there isn't enough time in the day or enough needs. <laughs> right. What about you guys? Paula, Jenny? Um, I think that for me, it's about having um, a support network of brains trust. So I have several events throughout the week because in, um, in Australia, we're still in lockdown in Melbourne. We're still, the borders are closed. There's no travel allowed. We've got about 20 people dying a day. So it's still really, um, still really prevalent here and we're forced to work from home we're under curfew so it's um very much still in the day and so we're because we're dealing with the national client base it's hard because they don't really like it's only metro melbourne that's in this state so nobody else really understands that you literally can't like you're not allowed to leave the house more than an hour a day wow so you're not allowed to leave with your partner and do anything you have to go on your own so it's very much um very much still prevalent and I guess that what's got me through it and managing the team is having um, nobody else in my business like I'm the only one that I have um, my professional women's network that I catch up with once a week I have friends that I catch up with at the same time same day every week that are all women and then I just by coincidence and then I have um, obviously professional network calls which you guys are in and then also um, SEO related calls which just happened which is was open to everybody in our network and then happened to have just been five people that have stuck around every week so over the three months we've sort of formed a bit of a bond um and we're like imagine what it's like when we can hang out in real life and without that and that's everything from a tuesday night to a friday night and without that i just wouldn't be i wouldn't be in the state that i am having gone through this because i think when you're a business owner, no matter what gender you are, you need to have a release. You need to have something that's your own, both professionally and personally. And I can imagine that I don't have kids, but I can imagine that would be the same for women that have kids. You need that little bit of escape for yourself. 
And so for me, it's knowing that you're doing well, you're doing well, keep going. You're actually, and having that support network to hear what others are going through. That's just been so invaluable. That's awesome. That was very deep. <laughs> <laughs> I should have went before you. <laughs> I lightened it up. Yeah. We're well, on very, lucky, uh, very lucky that my, um, my kids are older. My youngest is 17. Um, and then my oldest is almost 25 and, and doesn't live at home anymore. So man, does my heart go out to to moms in particular, like people like you, Samantha, with young kids at home trying to, I mean, I just, you know, I think back to those days um, of when we had the kids at home and I was trying to work in the business and um, it, it's just so much, it's so much to handle. So thankfully we, the kids are older um, and, and, you know, basically self-sufficient on most days. Um, in terms of COVID, we had a really tough um, May, June, and July. Um, we were, gosh, we were, we were negative in profit. We were, yeah, $28,000 in July. Um, typically, we see about uh, $20,000 to $40,000 profit a month, and we were down in the hole by $28,000 and had not made a profit the two months prior either. Um, so that was really tough. We were seeing very few leads. Um, I was putting every minute of my, my days into trying to generate leads. Um, and thankfully, August is like killing it. Um, I just signed a $93,000 contract yesterday and man, does that feel good. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, the, the last two months, like, okay, fine, fine. <laughs> yeah, you know, you start to doubt, like, yeah. Yeah. no, yeah, yeah, come for back. Sure. Are we, are we ever gonna yeah. get out of this? And we, you know, we had a time period about, oh gosh, probably four years ago or so, where Chris and I weren't taking paychecks for about three months, um, and that sucks. Um, we, our, our team, I didn't mention this, but our team is um, all full-time employees. They're in-house. Um, I don't go into work right now because I do have an autoimmune disease. And so I just feel safer not being in our, um, in our space because we, we're in a collaborative space. So there's about 15 other people from an architecture firm in our space as well. Yeah. Um, so I stay home, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's hard to be separated from the team, but um but I'm glad that they're at least together and I'm kind of on the, the sidelines just, just trying to get stuff done. But yeah, thankfully um, things are looking up and we're getting busy again. And now, you know, it's like just a better quality of problems. Now we're only four people where we used to be five and now we have all this work coming in. So, <laughs> so, um, so yeah, it's, just... it's made you more like um, think about how the team works and how you manage the team. Like, for example, we cut subscriptions when COVID first happened. We didn't just do a blanket cut. Like we spent a month sitting there and going, what could we find something else for? And now we're going, how did we have that much? Do you know what I mean? So you yeah, sort of yeah. go, you don't want to over and it's different with people. You don't want to overwork them and nurture them. Yeah. But it just helps you sort of shift your mindset a little bit yeah. to how yeah, you deal yeah. with stuff and how you run efficiency. Yeah. And in all honesty, the, the designer that we let go, she was a kick-ass designer. She was not a great culture fit for us, hasn't been a great culture for, fit for us since day, you know, five, probably. <laughs> um, but when you have a rock star designer who is like a workhorse and just busts work out, it's really hard to let them go. Um, but I, but COVID kind of made us have to do that, make that decision. And um I, you know, I think it'll be for the best in the long run. And it sounds like she's that good. She's seriously, yeah. no issues probably finding another position somewhere else, you know? Oh, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. She'll find a good spot. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, I think last year was my year where I was like, do I even want to like keep doing this? Cause I just was not seeing the revenue and, but I just kept plugging away at it last year. It was, you know, so I got WordCamp going, WordPress meetup here. I kind of, I just kind of got more involved in helping other people. That was kind of been my thing for the past two years. I just want to be helpful. I just want to share what I know 
help other people, other developers, other WordPress developers, not an issue. Go to this guy. He can help you out. I'm not the person for you. Share, 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 share. And I think it all is coming back this year because this year I'm killing it. Like, whoa. And I keep looking at it like, what am I, what am I doing this year? I'm like, no, come on. You know, none of that. You worked your tail off last year and this year, you know, so I'm just taking, reaping the rewards at this point of just being helpful. And I think for me, when COVID hit, it was just triple that like, okay, what can I do? Who needs help? What can I do for you? What do you need? Cause I got the virtual thing down, baby. I know the virtual life. <laughs> Ask me anything. So I started getting on um, webinars with the local chamber. I've done like two or three of them with them. Um, we, there's a, a Fort Bend initiative here to help people go get through COVID. So I'm on that panel and um, I just got a referral from it. You know, it was just totally random because I'm just getting known, you know, there's the mayors involved, the counties, you know, so it's kind of a thing. So again, it was just, for me, COVID was just, what can I do? How can I help you? And, you know, I think now it's like, it, it's all coming, kind of coming back. And, but I think what you guys were saying too, I've got a, um, an 18 year old and a 13 year old and it's not so much been them being home it's more the the emotional needs at this point for them and because they can't see their friends you know they can't go out we can't you know school ended in march they've been home since then and then especially with the 18 year old starting college which monday she starts thank god she's that was touch and go you know it was just her emotional like i got i can't be home and go to college. I need to go away. I need to, so, you know, what if that were to happen? What if, you know, and it was just that part of it was, that was tough, you know, I was trying to get them through that. Um, but my clients, you know, I've had, I think I had about three clients where um, they email me like, we're, we're struggling here. I'm like, Hey, not a problem. Three months, four months, you don't have to pay anything. We're good. Just, and there were care plans, you know, hosting care plans. I'm like, we're good. We'll kick you back up in August, September. You just let me know, you know, because that's you know, amazing. Wow. Yeah, you just, yeah, just kind of, because you know what? They're going to come back in September and you know what they're going to, they're going to remember that. They're going to go, because okay. if I'd been to GoDaddy, they would have been like, Meh, sorry, this is not how we work, you know, but you know, just, uh, you know, I think that's as us, the empathy part of it. Yep. You know, we've been there. I get it. You know, I know you'll come back. You'll, you know, so what can I do to help? So, yeah, yeah. So tell me, um, this is all good stuff. Tell me, uh, and, and the, everybody in the chat, if you've got questions, feel free. Just ask us anything. I think um, just let us know if you've got anything about growing a business, getting leads, you know, how are we dealing, you know, what we're doing with right now. What about um, as you've grown, what are there some of the things that you've learned kind of lessons learned, things that, you know, if you were to at, talk to yourself five years ago, what would you tell yourself five years ago? Hey, don't do that. <laughs> it's not, don't do that ever again. <laughs> you know, what, think of something that you're, you just would like to tell yourself what not to do. I think for us, because we have an internal team, it's really remembering how important having, um, a positive, healthy culture in the workplace, how important that is. Um, we've unfortunately had a, had a couple of kind of toxic um, employees. And, you know, when they're really great, talented workers, it, you, you tend to kind of brush that off like, oh, you know, I kind of dread going to work because I don't really want to be around this person, but their work is so great. Like, I should just be able to get over it. And so that's, that's been a lesson that I've had to learn a couple of times. I don't know that I've fully learned it yet, but I was just reminded of it again after this last, when we had to lay our designer off. Um, but I think it's for us, it's, it's been really important to remember how important that culture is because when you're, you know, when you're in an office with somebody 40, 50, whatever, however many hours a week it is, um, you know, they're, they become your family and they, you know, because my husband and I work together, we see each other that much. But if it wasn't a husband wife team, like I would be seeing them more than I, you know, see my spouse, I see them more than I see my kids for sure. Um, and so it's, it's just a, 
a good reminder of how important the people around you are and how they affect your mental attitude. And whether that's in person or even if you have a dispersed team, like people can still be, you know, dropping the ball and be saying snarky stuff. And, and I, I just, I don't, I don't have a lot of space for that in my life. <laughs> and so i um, trying to remember how important that is and that there's always, you know, there, there, there is the right person who's the right fit out there. It's just, it's just finding them. And sometimes that takes some time. Yeah. Let me just real quick. So I hate to harbor on like as a woman, I don't, I don't really want to do that, but I, I think that for all of us, we have that question of, for me, it is hard for me to fire somebody. It just, it just is. Cause I want to be helpful and I, and I feel like everybody can change and I can train them and it can get better. If I just have the process, they can do this. You know, have you guys ever felt that way? Like it, when it comes to culture, when it comes to staff and contractors, hard to fire somebody because you're like, I know I can do this. They can do this. Actually, um, at my part, my life partner, business partner, who's obviously a man, um, he does that worse than me. He's just like super. Well, Chris is awful. Chris will we'll oh, go into a oh, meeting no, together no. and try to fire somebody and he'll like start to unfire them. I'm like, what <laughs> are you doing? Yeah, so like, Chris is not oh, allowed. But but they're so a bit like yeah a bit like what jenny was doing like oh but they're this and they're that no they're they're like they're they're inefficient or they're this you know and so i we're actually like flipped in that way i have no time for any of that i'm like i've spent you know i've fought so hard to build this business no effing way <laughs> like <laughs> It's not <laughs> you know, and you'll be like, oh, which is great because it's the yin and the yang, right? And Jenny, I, you know, you probably find this as well is I could not do this business on my own. Like oh, for anyone no out way. there that is doing this business where their partner is in a completely different industry, hats off to you. Like, because when I'm angry, <laughs> he can't me down. when he needs to prep up, I know how to do it, you know, and it's very... Um, well, I'm definitely doing the sim similar to Jenny, like I'm the 90% person and he's more on the tools. That's because he chooses to be there. Like he's better on the tools, you know, but when I need him and I need him to sit up, he does it. And so I find that I've completely like digressed the question here. But, yeah, good. Um, good. Yeah. <laughs> I, I really feel like that I'm very, very lucky to have that and be in that situation. Mm -hmm. um, and so I guess if I looked back at my like five years ago, I would probably say, ask for help more. Mm -hmm. um, because I think that, um, and this is definitely where I'll say as a woman, but like when you go to meetups, when you go to conferences, you know, you go to that. And as a woman on your own, um, cause at that stage I was definitely going to all those events on my own. It is hard to join conversations where they're all men. It is hard to go and approach speakers and do all that you know, because they're having blokey, blokey conversations and you feel like the third wheel, you know, and you feel like unless I'm six, six foot tall in heels, you know, I can't like go in and just use my intelligence to join the conversation, you know, and that can go from the local meetup to anything. And that's where you just go, man, sometimes this really sucks. Like sometimes this is really hard. Like there's types of works that we're never going to get because I'm the salesperson in the company, you know, and I've learned over time to just be okay with that, you know? And so I think that um, if I could go back in time, I'd probably ask for help to learn that earlier. Like to learn that it's just okay that you that don't skill. have to please everyone. Yeah. You don't have to fight. You don't have to fight to be in those groups because, you know, they say like, oh, do you really want to be in those groups anyway? Yeah, I do because fear of missing out, right? <laughs> just because like- But they're I'm thinking sure the same thing you're thinking. thinking. Really? that's that's the thing they're thinking the same thing you are like oh should i you know can i join in this group in this conversation they're probably thinking exactly the same thing as you am i should i can i you know do i fit am i do i fit this group you know so it's i think all of us have that those thoughts but yeah that's a good yeah, one I, if i sort of asked or had that conversation with people like we are now five years ago i think we would have got that confidence or I've been able to overcome that a lot faster and then grow a lot more, you know? So I think having the ability to ask to, for yourself, like to build your own confidence is super important in business. Yeah. yeah. What about you, Samantha? What would you tell yourself five years ago? Not to ever <sighs> do. <laughs> oh gosh. Um, 
There's a couple of things, actually. I would probably tell myself not to doubt my intuition. Um, every time I have second guessed that like mm, little twins you get when you have a conversation, like, do I take on this client or not? They turn into a nightmare client. The gut, just oh, the gut the telling day, me no, but... <laughs> but the money's so good. <laughs> um, so uh, trust your gut would definitely be, uh, and I, I've gotten better over the years, but even this year I had that same thing. Like there were no major red flags. There was just that little instinct. And I was like, ah, oh, but there's no red flags. So I doubted myself. Mm. Um, yeah, uh, that's a big one. Um, I think the other one ties in to a little bit of what Paula said, which is really just having confidence, um, knowing the value that I bring. Um, I, I would, uh, for me, one of my biggest things back in the day was I don't have a formal degree. Um, I was one of those people, like I like to learn a lot of things, but going through the system of actually completing all the courses you have to, to get a degree is so not me. Like I just, I just want to take the courses on the things I want to learn. And I don't want to take all your other BS stuff that you say I have to take. <laughs> like just teach me what I want to know. So I don't have a degree. So I, I would doubt myself. I would say, you know, I can't charge that because I don't have a college degree or things of that nature. Um, and it was probably about four years ago, I attended a conference where somebody said, what is something you see as a weakness and how can you flip it to be a strength? And it wasn't until they asked that question that I was actually able to flip the script on that and say, hey, I may be self-taught, not have a degree, but that just means I know how to problem solve. I know how to figure stuff out and I'm not going to be like, oh, it can't be done within this box. No, I'm going to say, okay, great. You want something outside the box? Great. Let's go figure it out. Um, so I finally was able to flip that script and, and have confidence in myself. Um, so it's really, I think the, the biggest thing I would tell myself is just believe in yourself, um, know your value and, uh, and listen to your gut. Yeah. That's good. That's so good. Yeah. The gut thing. I tell you, you just oh. doubt yourself. Like maybe I'm ah, the good money's good. And maybe of this and maybe that. And then you just were like, damn it. I knew it from the very beginning. Um, so Maureen's got a question. At what point did you make the jump from, from freelancer to agency? When I was in art, if you want, <laughs> go for it. <laughs> Um, so we, like I said, we were working, um, nights, weekends, nonstop. It just got to be really, really tough to, um, to have a life. And we, gosh, our kids were probably 10, 10 and three at the time when it was like, this is a lot of work. Um, what we were making doing freelance work was, was as much as uh, my husband, Chris was making in his, his full-time job. Um, and then the real, the real straw that broke the camel's back was that um, Chris really didn't like his job. And so he would come home every night from work and complain from the more moment he walked in until the moment he started working on freelance work <laughs> about his job and the people he worked for and um, just the, the situations that he was kind of put into. And I got to be really conscious of um, seeing our two kids absorbing that and like you just complain, complain, complain about your job, but you stay. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and so I just, I really didn't want them to think that, that you don't have control of your life, um, that you're, you know, you, you do what you want to do that makes you happy and, and take the steps that you need to take to get there. Um, and so I ended up giving Chris a, a kind of an ultimatum, like, I, I can't have you complaining nonstop about your job. We either need to do something about it, or we need to do something about you kind of you know, bringing that home. Um, and so, yeah, and then a, another just very serendipitous kind of couple turn of events and um, he, yeah, he ended up quitting, but, but it took, we, we're not risk takers. We, um, we move slowly. <laughs> <laughs> and so two kids and a mortgage and, um, you know, neither Chris or I came from from, you know, families that had a lot or any money. So, so the, that sense of security was really, really, really important to us. Um, and so it was scary, mm -hmm. but, you know, reading, I reading a couple books, it was like, what's the worst thing that's going to happen? Like, you know, like 
we won't make any money and we'll go get a job. Like we're not going to let ourselves starve and live on the streets. And, you know, we, we can manage this. If it doesn't work out, we'll just get jobs. It's okay. Um, so I think, I think that that was the turning point and I'm so thankful that we did that. I think, you know, while the kids now are like, oh my God, do you two ever talk about anything except work? You know, <laughs> at least, at least we're in control of our lives and they've been able to see that, um, that that's been really important. Yeah. Cool. Samantha, I, Paula, you started off working though, right? Didn't you, you were, yeah. At, yeah. Um, I found it really hard. So I, I love, I love corporate work. Yeah. Um, I like going, having a coffee, that a lot. <laughs> um, I love having a coffee machine and um, having like meetings and like just getting dressed every day, even at home, like during COVID, I've still got dressed every day, you know, and I still say to my partner, how do I look? Um, you know, it's just my person, like, it's just me. And I couldn't imagine being any other way, which is weird. I know. Um, but it made it really, really hard. And I got through it two ways, actually. And this is another entrepreneurial thing, but uh, I found it from going to, for me with mindset, I found going from corporate work to a co-working space. There is no way I could work from home full time. It's not in my blood. It's not in my, my way of running a business. And without that, and so actually I built a co-working directory, CoFinder, which is an Australian co-working directory to help people find spaces that are best suited to their personalities. And that runs Australia wide and that generates leads all the time for co-working spaces. And I did that because if I hadn't had a co-working space, I would still be in corporate work right now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I needed other people around me bigger than our company. So I think that that was, you know, and when we hire, like we've just hired a designer, it's important to us that they know that they've got a culture that's bigger than us, you know? So it's, it, it's nice. Um, so that's how I did it. And um, how did I know it was right point when I could comfortably live, when I'd gotten my freelance business to a point and with a product that I felt was, I had enough clients that were say 12 months of sustainable. Like I knew that they weren't going to leave in 12 months sort of thing where they could um, allow me to continue living life. So pay mortgage, pay food, not, not run a profit. We didn't run a profit in the business for a couple of years, as in after salaries. Um, but we're there now, which is like the best thing as a business owner, that's sort of an element of success, which I think you'll all attest to. Um, but that's when I knew it was time is when you go, I, I love this so much. The other thing is I started dreaming and doodling at work about my other business. Oh. So I was at work planning what I would do from the minute I got home to the minute I would go to bed in terms of other work. And that's not fair on the company that you're at, but it's also when you know I'm lost now, like I'm, my heart is in something else and I have just enough money to do it to survive. And I need to give this a go. Wow. What you, Samantha? After so, this, we got one other question and then we're, we're going to finish up, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try to keep it quick then. Um, so for me though, I think, I think there's different phases. Uh, so like there's the phase of like jumping ship from corporate into this work, but I still felt like when I did that, I was still freelancing. I wasn't really in an agency mode yet. So the jump from corporate to this was really just, I was done with the company I was at. Um, I had come home one day that it, the company I was at was filled with drama and a bunch of people, you know, just so I came home and I was just really upset by the day and my husband looked at me and he's like your freelancing's about half of what you make let's just figure what we can cut from our budget and make it happen and I was like great um but because I have an amazing husband who basically keeps the roof over my head I still had treated my business a lot like a hobby and was still doing freelancing I wasn't really agency or business mindset uh for a number of years and I think what really helped to shift my mindset and get me more into the business and agency side is really, um, it was actually Mavs, to be honest. It's so about two years ago joining Mavs and, um, and trying all these different things. Uh, again, finding that sweet spot and realizing that it was leading a team it made me want to grow the team. So uh, I just want to help others thrive. That's where my sweet spot is. That's where my empathy drives me. Um, as we're talking about being very empathetic women, I want to help other people like me grow businesses. 
So uh, for me, switching to agency became A, I can't handle all this work on my own and B, I want, I want to be surrounded by other amazing women who want to build equally amazing businesses. So I just brought them to, to join me. I was like, I don't like working alone. So <laughs> I built a business with a bunch of people who like working with me. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I think for me, I worked uh, the government for 10 years. I mean, Defense Department, and then it was smaller agencies, just other beyond that. But then I think like, like you, Samantha, my, I had a baby and it was like, I can't, I just didn't want to go to a nine to five job with a baby at home. And then we moved and all that stuff. So yeah, I was a freelancer. I think of until I got into WP Elevation. That's, that's when I think that the tide started to shift when I just realized I could get and that in the 48 hour, the four hour work week. <laughs> I was like, that was one of the books that we read. Like, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so what to do some of this hmm. so then it just kind of from there it was like what else can I get off my plate what else can I get off my and before you knew it you know then I'm with WP Elevation it was just like I can automate these things I can step back from things I can have other people do things for me and I think that's when I went from freelancer to wow before I know it I had like four people on my team like I guess I'm an agency now you know so it was just I think with like all you guys it was just like this gradual step by step by step by step so um but it, you know like i think like you were saying jenny that there was no i wasn't in a rush for this it wasn't like boom agency like you hear some stories of these people that have this influx of money and then they hire everybody and they go after the big guys i'm like nope not me <laughs> it's just very yeah. slow so i'm um, not 99 of business either i'm sorry uh, what'd you say paul not 99 of businesses either like a, a luxurious enough to get that. Yeah. I will say, last question, Carrie, as what's your single, single best bit of advice for agency owners, best lessons learned? So that's a good one to, to finish up on. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. Best, best, best. I tell you, that gut thing is a good one now. <laughs> Like that uh, thing that has gotten I, me out of so many, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. no, I think the other one is knowing when to say no, no, not doing it. And that could be volunteering, could be part of a board of directors. It could be running something. It could be taking on a client. It could be firing a client. It's all about saying no. Okay. I know it says one. But I have to piggyback off of you, something. We know you break the rules. I didn't give them what I intended to give. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but piggybacking off of that, uh, knowing when to say no and, and trusting your gut is um, the one that I had the hardest time because I love to be helpful with is uh, know when not to provide help. Like um, for me, I started a lot of my business in Facebook groups. And it's a lot of the, like, just because you can doesn't mean you should do it. Uh, so people would post things like they needed help with X, Y, and Z. And I'm like, oh, I know how to do that. So I would answer and do it. And you fill your plate with all of these, I can do it things, but they're not really the, you, you should do it things. And I don't like should, but you know what I'm saying? Um, so just because you can, doesn't mean you should, um, is the piggyback off of yours. And then the other one now I've lost the other one so we'll just stick with that one <laughs> sorry things go out of my mind as quickly as they come <laughs> I think you? for me um things changed significantly when I learned my Enneagram type I'm going to drop it in the in the chat um I yeah I'm a nine uh, which means I'm a, a mediator um, but aside from that, I think I, I always thought that um, my, my skill set and what I brought to the company was, was not as important or not as needed as what Chris brought. Chris has a ton of insight. He's this like incredible question asker. Um, anybody that's in <laughs> Mavericks knows how many questions Chris asks. And I was always like, why don't I have good questions? Like, I, I, don't, I wouldn't even think to ask a question like that. And I just would really get down on myself for not, um, not being what I thought I should be for our business. Um, but learning my Enneagram type, like, changed everything. Um, and I, 
while I won't say I don't still struggle with feeling like other people bring more to the business, sometimes like I, I see my my particular value in the business and that's been really, really important for me. So wow. how do you come off the back of that? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna go more mind, mindset. I originally had get across your numbers, but that's boring. No, that's um, still good. Nah, uh, that's good. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it can be like a double-edged sword, but it's something that really, and I think that goes back to Maureen's question of um, going from freelancer to agency as well, is that knowledge of your numbers. Like when yeah. you start to learn your numbers, you're a business person. Like there's no going back, you know, that's it. But what I really wanted to say is don't ever stop something. So don't ever stop dreaming, don't ever stop learning, don't ever stop growing. You will never ever in business have a day where you don't learn something for the good or the bad or for personal growth or how to deal with a client. And you need to embrace it and you need to love it. Like if you don't, find someone else and work for them because um, that's where that resilience comes from. Right. And just that constant like, I've got an idea. Cool, let's see where that goes. Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. But don't ever stop. Just keep, keep moving, keep growing. Right, right. Good stuff. Well, thank you, everybody. Appreciate this. Good stuff. I think everybody Are you going to give us your insight, Christina? What's your biggest you lesson? It. Mine was the uh, trust your gut, say no. It was the oh, say no one. That's right. Yeah, COVID that's brain. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, that COVID exists. <laughs> COVID-19 on my stomach and the COVID brain. <laughs> I, well, I was talking to somebody about all that. They said 2020, um, if anybody had any kind of um, New Year's resolutions, it's a wash. You get to start over in 2021. Because <laughs> 2020 <laughs> doesn't count. Doesn't <laughs> <For> count. <anybody. laughs> so, yeah. And, and I think the COVID brain that does exist. I tell you, it's like every day flashes. It just flashes by. I mean. Yeah, it's, time so. is it's a concept. yeah it, completely <laughs> in a twilight zones loop thing it's weird but thank you everybody for coming on i appreciate you guys and i hope everybody else learned a few things about what it's like for all of us so um all right so usually what we say is go elevate so <laughs> go elevate everybody go elevate. Go elevate. Bye. <laughs>